Hey, welcome back to Schmuckle Farm. Just a quick video about Selena is feeling quite excited about the fact that I'm here. Quick video about hay usage and how it affects you. Sorry for the bright light in your eyes. How it affects your bottom line whenever you're boarding horses and what kind of money should you expect to make boarding horses. A lot of it is region dependent but there are a few consistent things that will affect your bottom line. All right, well, we're on the subject of this. Since we had such a drought in probably, we didn't have any rain here for the entire month of July, and half the month of August. During August, I think we had two days where it might have rained a grand total of three hours, and none of that was really hard, mostly light rain. So all the pastures are pretty much grazed down and we feed hay at night anyway. But now I've picked up a couple of round rolls and yes, these were outside rolls. And what I found is same thing I would do with cattle. When I take the string off, I take the first layer off, throw that away because nothing needs it. Even cows won't need it. But what's underneath is good hay. And if they're stacked right, Really all, the only thing that's wet is very top. So I bought from this guy before and had no problem with this hay last year. I'm gonna go get a few more bales from him next week. But meantime, I need to split one of these round rolls up and get part of it in the main barn and part of it under the pasture shelter so that there's something for them to work on during the day. Didn't get to show putting the hay in the shelter, thanks to the GoPro. But as you can see, once you cut the string on it, it's gonna start dumping. As soon as you, as soon as you set it up vertical, it will start unrolling, which is fine because I'm about to shut this gate. I'm gonna take the tractor, push it over. I've got a piece of plywood sitting under it. I'm gonna push it over to the fence, and then I'll put the other piece of cattle panel around it to keep the goats from walking it down. And we'll go from there all right so that's it in a nutshell if you have a shelter yes you can go and buy the hay rings for pastures but if you have a place to put it under where you can put sides on it the easiest thing to do is just buy these cattle panels these are like 30 something dollars a piece at tractor supply this one's been cut down because of the size that i needed but they come in 16 foot lengths so literally, if you had a full-size round bale sitting outside, you could simply take two or three S-hooks, big heavy S-hooks, two of these, wrap them completely around a bale sitting in the pasture, and that will allow the animals to pull the hay through, but it will stop them from getting in there walking on it. So what you see here is the stuff that had fallen. It's where the goats have been bedding, so I'm fine with leaving it on the ground because as they pull clean hay off, at least there's something between it and the dirt underneath. So as they walk this hay down and mash it into the bedding, it'll, it'll clean it up a little bit. But that, what's left of that bale, which is probably about probably 60% of the bale, that will stay out here and last the goats and the horses as, they, as the horses rotate in and out probably 30 days and as you can see the goats still prefer the weeds and some of these grasses are out here they are really good at eating blackberries and poison ivy and stuff like that but this gives them something to come in they do eat a lot of hay and it just takes some of the pressure off of the pastures which are basically down to almost nothing this is what happens when you get no rain, essentially no rain for two months. So feeding hay, you know, we're starting, it's, today is September 30th. Normally I would not want to feed hay until the end of next month, but that's not really an option. Um, I, have to, I have to have this 
and round rolls are not your best investment as far as the waste goes because with a square bill there's almost no waste but a round roll right now is 50 to 65 dollars and a square bale is 11.50 per bale and this round roll probably weighs close to 800 pounds so at a good if you have a really solid square bale most of them that you're buying in the stores are consistently 40 to 50 pounds some of them are a little bit lighter than that depending on what it is if it's coastal bermuda it may be lighter than that but you don't use you never will use 100 percent of a round bale cows horses whatever if you can find round bales that were baled and immediately put inside of a barn where you don't take the outside layer or two off of them you're going to save a lot but they're still as they eat going to throw a lot of it on the ground that's just the nature of the beast it is what it is but that's just part of doing business so they're going to eat this this will get them off my grass it gets them under the shelter too out of the sun and i'm going to put one inside the barn as well and we'll go from there see how long those last between the two of them i should get to well what i'm putting is the, the rest of the half from this bale is going into the barn inside the barn in the hay rack that i made that'll last about two weeks before i have to pull some of this and replenish it but this one bale should last between the two shelters about 30 days So here is the hay tote that I made. I uh, used a cage from an IBC water tote, made a video on it last year. Attached it to a pallet, makes it easy to move with a small tractor. And that's typically what you'll see. Nugget will come in, tax a couple of the other ones. We'll come in and pull a lot of the hay out and then sit it on the floor and eat it. Concrete floor, I sweep this in the morning and in the evening, so I keep it clean. And they'll pretty much clean up what they don't need on the floor, the goats will eat. And what I do is when I'm cleaning out stalls, any hay that's left over in the hay bags or in the hay racks, I'll throw in here as well so that in the evenings they get fresh hay all the time. So I'm running five stalls. And I also have two stalls that I use for goats when they're kidding. But since I'm about to be down to only weathers, I'm probably going to take the center divider out of that and put the donkey in here. That's a donkey sized stall. He's a miniature, so he doesn't need a 12 by 12 stall, which is what you know the horses that are 15 hands are using. And the way you price your stalls is by level of service. So different customers are gonna need different levels of service. One thing I do not offer, which some people do, is pasture only boarding. Simply because I treat every horse that's here like it's my own. And I'm not going to leave my horse outside 24-7 in all weather conditions. I'm simply not going to do it. It's not good for them. Yes, I know wild horses do it all the time, and a lot of them don't look very good. So bringing a horse in when the weather's bad, bringing a horse in when it's too hot to be outside, keeping fans on them to keep the bugs off of them, having a cool place for them to go when it's 105 degrees. Or, like last week, we had massive thunderstorms. Horses were in shelters all over the place on their own. I got out here, they were all standing inside. Give them a place to go. So if you are doing boarding where you're providing all the feed and hay and all the maintenance, that's gonna be the most expensive service. In this area, with no other facilities, you're looking at about somewhere between 450 and $500 a month. If you are simply providing a stall and the owner is expected to do this, all the stall clean out, provide their own feed, feed their own horse. That's the bottom level. And you're in this area, you're looking at no more than $250 a month per stall. And that's really not a level of service most people want. Most people want to pay a little bit more because they'd like to be able to have the flexibility of someone else feeding and caring for the horse. So the bulk of the service that we provide 
is stalls where the horses go in and out every night. I feed, I clean out the stalls. Owner provides their own food and hay. Adequate pasture, that's a must. Even though I've got plenty of pasture under fence for the amount of animals that I have, I'm actually adding another one down by the little pond and two in the front because I want to be able to have two areas completely at rest for one week all the time. So I want to rotate them through so that one area or two areas don't have any animals on them for a solid week during the peak growing season. And, you know, barring droughts, which kill as much hay as, or kill as much grass as the horses eat, you should be able to get your grass in this part of the country to last up until the beginning of November. What do you want, donkey? It's a GoPro, you can't eat it. Donkey loves treats. Now, if you're running one of these really large acreage farms, there's two of them in my area that are getting a full, full stall board is about $900 to $1,000 a month. One of them has miles and miles of trails to ride. The other one has a lot of trails that they don't own. They're part of the National Forest. But what they do have is facilities for training the jumping class of horses, dressage. You get covered arenas, um, dressage arenas to scale so that people who compete in those areas can actually go and practice really hard. That's not your typical farm. Typical farms like mine, 17 plus acres. And I've only got a little less than half that under pasture right now, and the gnats are terrible. But I am gonna be adding several more pastures simply because I wanna be able to rest each one of these. I want to be able to have two at rest for one week at a time all the time so as i rotate through maybe my grass will last a little bit longer barring a drought which with a drought it kills as much as the horses eat so it doesn't matter if it's getting no rain and it's getting 95 degree weather all the time then the grass isn't going to make it no matter what you do i mean you put a lot of water on it sure but with a pasture you're probably not going to do that and I realized that when you're talking about just providing stall and pasture for someone and they do all their own work, yes, if you're only charging $250 per stall and you've only got two stalls rented, you may think, well, that's just not really worth my while. But that's an extra $500 a month that you're not really doing anything for except maintaining fences and that sort of thing. And $6,000 a year going into your pocket that's really good extra money for not having to put a lot of work in. So when you're looking at getting into boarding, start small, start with a couple of horses. Even if you have six or seven stalls, get used to what you're providing. Cause I will tell you what I provide is me doing all the work on the stalls every morning and every evening. My stalls stay clean. The water buckets stay full with clean water. I clean the buckets every day. It takes me about two hours in the morning to go through, feed everyone, get everyone turned out, clean up the barn, clean the buckets, replace the water, clean the water troughs, fill those back up, and take care of the donkey. So I hope this kind of gives you an idea of what will be involved as far as the money to board horses, what you should expect to bring in what level of service you should be expected to provide or you know how much you want to make depends on what you're going to offer and how much time you're going to commit to it you can make really good money i mean there are places that have large facilities they're boarding you know 20 horses some of them 30 horses and the minimum they're charging is 500 bucks so that's that's a full-time gig i mean that's really a lot involved there's multiple people working so the money does get divided up quite a bit but you can do quite well at it but for most of us it's going to be a part-time job that just pays pretty well seems like a little bit of overkill to use a tractor for this but the uh golf cart blew a tire the other day 
feel like carrying two bales of hay all the way up to this other barn. It's about 100 yards.